This is the 5 a.m. Miracle, episode number 495. The top 10 episodes in 10 years of the 5 a.m. Miracle podcast. Good morning and welcome to the 5 a.m. Miracle. I am Jeff Sanders and this is the podcast dedicated to dominating your day before breakfast. My goal is to help you bounce out of bed with enthusiasm, create powerful lifelong habits, and tackle your grandest goals with extraordinary energy. In the episode this week, I'll break down a few of my favorite episodes from this podcast in the last decade and a few of my plans for this podcast in the next decade. Let's get to it. So yeah, it's been 10 years of the 5 a.m. Miracle Podcast. I have been on the mic every Monday morning since July 1st of 2013. I don't know about you, but I'm a little surprised I'm still here. <laughs> it's been it's been quite the journey. Uh, I'm not sure how long you've heard this podcast for, if you are a brand new listener, your first episode ever, or if you've been here since day one or somewhere in between. This podcast was created for you, the listener, to get value from all those core concepts that I just listed at the top of the show this week that I do every single week and that I honestly built this show upon 10 years ago. This podcast was created for a lot of reasons, but one of them, and probably the core reason for me that's more personal, was I wanted this podcast to be an expression of the things that I love the most. I wanted to transfer my energy and enthusiasm about not just life in general, but specific things that really fire me up, whether it's personal development, productivity, healthy habits, talking to amazing people all around the world, just so I can connect with people just like you. So hopefully you can be inspired to learn new things, to take some great action steps, to literally change your life. I made this show from day one to be an action-oriented, growth-oriented change agent, a transformative podcast. I've always wanted that. I think that's true. It's it's hard to say for sure. I mean, I know know the impact this show has had on my own life. Everything from book deals to speaking engagements to coaching clients to online courses, the business aspect of the show. Okay, that's, that's one part. But then there's all the personal growth stuff that happened that I never saw coming. Uh, The networking with amazing human beings everywhere. Uh, The opportunities for me to transform my own creativity and just my potential being realized in a way that I never saw. It's incredible to do anything long term, to truly commit to something and not quit. And I know that's powerful because there are very few podcasters left who've been doing shows As long as I've been doing this one, I know because I'm friends with a lot of them (laughs) and we've been around doing this thing for a while and it's an incredible thing to continue something that you care about long term. Yes, it's been 10 years and yes, I do plan to be here for another 10 and beyond that. Like I assume for all intents and purposes that this will be what I do forever. And I say that because there is always something here always something of value for me to extract for my own life, but there's always something new to share with you, something I want to discuss, something that I care about, some concept that I think is transformative in some capacity. That's why this show is here. It's why it always has been and probably why it always will be. And so having said that, I know from looking at the data that the majority of listeners are listening to episodes in the last two years, give or take. And that means the previous eight years, for the most part, kind of get ignored, which is fine. It's kind of how listenership goes with podcasts. But that also means there are opportunities for you to dig into the older and better stuff, better in quotes, just older stuff that might have some good nuggets you can extract. And so the episode this week, I'm going to break down a few of my favorites. Uh, You may have your own, and that's awesome. Uh, This is not meant to be a, a perfect list here. It's just meant to give you a sense of, Honestly, what this show has been all about, what it means to me, what it could mean for you. And so hopefully that means you can go back, listen to some good stuff from the past, but then also have a better footing for what this show can bring to your life going forward. 
And I would hope that this show has been meaningful to you. I know it has meant a lot to me. So all I can say to that is, is thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for caring. Thank you for supporting this show. Uh, I literally would not be here unless you were still here. And so, yeah, it, it's, it's been awesome. Uh, don't worry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not tend to be a crier here. Uh, but I am someone who definitely appreciates those who have made an impact in my life. And that definitely includes you. Having said that, let's kick off this top 10 list. This is going to be, um, it's actually more than 10 because I never do just the thing I said I would do. It's always a little extra, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. It, of course, for a top 10 list of this show, I'm going to begin number one with episode number one. Literally the very first episode that I launched on July 1st of 2013 called Seven Benefits of Starting Your Day Bright and Early. And to get a little taste of that episode, in case you have not gone back and heard it, uh, let's tune in to that intro right now. The 5 a.m. Miracle, episode number one. Good morning and welcome to the introductory episode of my brand new podcast, The 5 a.m. Miracle. I am Jeff Sanders, and this is the podcast dedicated to dominating your day before breakfast. My goal is to help you bounce out of bed with enthusiasm, create powerful, lifelong habits, and tackle your grandest goals with extraordinary energy. In today's first episode, I'll be talking about seven benefits of starting your day bright and early. Oh, wow. <laughs> Memory lane, huh? So aside from the fact that my voice was a solid octave higher than it is today, beyond that, there's a lot there that's still true, right? A lot of who I was a decade ago that's still who I am today and still what this podcast is today. Those core concepts I just listed literally in episode one that I have been sharing every episode recently uh, ever since, those things still matter to me, right? All those concepts of bouncing out of bed with enthusiasm, those lifelong habits, and of course, extraordinary energy through those grand goals. All of those concepts are baked into what this show is. Even if the episode itself does not mention any of that, that's what this podcast is all about. It is my attempt to transfer energy and enthusiasm about these topics into your life. And when this show launched and I, I wrote and then recorded this episode, my intent behind it, my thought back then was I hope that this does something for someone. And I say that because what I was experiencing back then was radical personal growth. My mid-20s, which is when this launch or late 20s or so, I was about 28 at the time. That season of my life was filled with radical change. I was growing left and right, trying new things, running ultra marathons, changing my diet, reading tons of books. It was a wild season of my life looking back at it. And so I wanted the podcast to, to reflect all of that and to bring all that value uh, to the listeners. Uh, that was the intent. And it worked. <laughs> it actually worked. And I know it worked because the show took off very quickly. The first couple of months, um, the show went from nothing to thousands of listeners a week. And I just, I literally couldn't believe it back then. I, I'm still in shock today. I still don't know how this show exists today. Uh, I may have a better idea. But the real, true, honest answer is I don't quite get it. I just know that it's worked. And I know this first episode really goes back and, and tells my backstory from the beginning. And so if you want to hear my voice, an octave higher, explaining my origin story of the show, knock yourself out. It's a, it's a fun episode for a lot of reasons. It's also unnecessary to listen to <laughs> if you've heard the show recently. Uh, but in terms of acknowledging uh, the origins of this show, number one is number one. Now, number two this week is actually a two-parter. So I have two episodes from the show, uh, both of which talk about my dietary transition. So yes, my late 20s was transformative, and what really kicked off a lot of that was my switch from a standard American diet to that of a vegan, and then at some point I transitioned to a raw vegan, and I kind of dabbled in a lot of that. And so episode 52, which is called My Unlikely Story of Ditching Meat for a Raw Vegan Diet, that gives you a lot to pull from. Whether you want to go vegan or not, you would probably want to hear this for a lot of reasons, uh, mostly from that transformation. 
this podcast has embodied what it means to change and to grow. And if you are in a place of your life right now where you can feel that urge, that itch to change, what that really means is it's an itch to do something different, something you never imagined you would do otherwise. I did not plan to go vegan. It happened to me. It was like an event that was just thrust upon me in my life. It, it wasn't an intentional decision until it was. And it wasn't impactful until it was. And this story of that transition, I think, embodies a lot of why this podcast is here, why this this whole thing, this my, my kind of vibe that I have, it, it's based on this, I guess, this willingness to say yes to change a willingness to say I am okay with letting go of the old and saying yes to the new, of acknowledging that I may have done things in a way that aren't going to work anymore and that my future looks different. So this is not a story about a diet switch. It's a story of transformation, a story of openness and progress and forward movement. So episode 52 breaks down that story from my perspective back then, and episode 350 is called 10 Years on One Diet, How to Change What You Eat for Good, which is another kind of decades-long episode where I talk about what it means to have been a vegan for 10 years, right? How you stick with something for that long, how you don't quit, how it just continues and evolves and grows and changes. We all have stories like that, right? We all have stories of something where we started something a long time ago and we're still doing it today, but of course, we're doing it differently and hopefully a lot better because we've learned a lot of lessons along the way and, and things have changed dramatically. That's what this story really unfolds, right? Both episodes 52 and 350, they tell that story. And one that I think is extremely powerful. It has been for my life. As, I mean, I'm still a vegan today. It's been 13 years now as of today's date, which is powerful. Right, It's a powerful thing to have continued something for that long. And so there are a lot of correlations between my dietary transition and this show. They kind of have a parallel existence, and there's a lot to pull from that. So once again, the two-part series there, episode 52 and 350. Oh, and by the way, the show notes for the episode this week, jeffsanders.com slash 495, has all the, of these links. So if you want to go, it should be in your podcast player, that first link in the show notes, jeffsanders.com slash 495, that will give you the full spread of all these links. Okay, number three this week was episode number 95. This was a goodie. Episode 95 was honestly my first chance Probably, yeah, probably my first chance to be vulnerable on this podcast. Episode 95 is titled Caffeine, Cocaine, and 420, How Drugs Affect Your Productivity. Now, the discussion of drugs and productivity is not a, a new conversation, um, and it wasn't actually that new for me at the time. What was new was this was the first chance for me to actually explain a lot of my backstory and, you know, literally drugs that I have taken in the past and how those affected me and and how that impacted who I became. And not that I have a long history of drug use, I don't, but it was it was one of those times where you feel this desire in you to change, to do something, to share something publicly. And then when you do, you're like, oh, well, that's no big deal. That wasn't nearly as scary or weird as I thought it would be. The, you know, the reception of it was positive. It was a good thing, which I think is a really interesting conversation about fear, not about drugs, not about cocaine or caffeine or any of those other things. This was an episode for me about fear, about me having an apprehension to do something that I thought would have a negative backlash, but I did it anyway. And then after I did it, I reflected back and go, well, that was nothing. That was no big deal at all. Why did I build this thing up into my head to be such a big deal? It just wasn't. And now I get to live a more open life of discussing these things without a fear of a response because I've already, already popped that balloon, right? We already did it. It's already done. And that's an awesome place to be. That's an awesome way to live. Living not just in truth, but living in a truth that's public where you have been willing to share things because you had this mental obstacle of fear that stopped you from doing something that you knew could be powerful for you to do. 
So for me, this was a big step forward. Episode 95, discussing my past history of the choices that I've made over the years, it was powerful. And one that, you know, whether you get a lot from it in terms of drug use or not, not the point at all. It could be helpful for that reason. But I think what's so much more powerful, the story behind personal growth itself is always a story of fear. Every single time, a willingness to look fear in the face and do something anyway. It, that has been such a powerful through line of this podcast and of my own life. And one, I think that if you're looking for an opportunity right here and now to change your life, that's where you start is what are you afraid of? What is stopping you? What is this made up obstacle in your brain that you could just overcome and then uh, let the stress go? and move forward in a better way. Number four was episode number 103. This was my first chance to interview someone who honestly was probably one of my heroes, someone I looked up to for so many years Prior to this conversation, episode 103 is titled A Marathon Before Breakfast with Dean Karnazes. If you know the world of ultra running, if you've ever run a marathon, if you've ever run an ultra marathon, ever done an endurance race of any kind, ever read books in this conversation, right? This whole topic of endurance athletics, you've probably at some point either seen pictures of, videos of, read books of, or heard of Dean Karnazes. He's everywhere because he's such a prolific ultra runner and someone who inspired me many years before this conversation with his very first book, Ultra Marathon Man. And it was a book that just transformed my entire thought process behind challenging myself with physicality, specifically with running, of course. But his book was so much more than that for me. It was this powerful, inspiring story of wherever you are today you can be somewhere better tomorrow. Whatever nonsense you have going on right now, you can fight through it. You can win over whatever this stuff is and be a better, more, not just more accomplished person tomorrow, but someone who's able to lean into those challenges, you know, head on, say, let's go do it. And so when Dean ran his first, you know, marathons and ultra marathons and then eventually wrote his book about it, He opened a whole new door of opportunity for so many people, myself included. And honestly, I became an ultra runner in large part because of Dean. So my chance to interview him and ask him these questions was was kind of was fine. Like the interview itself, I think, was good. But it was so much more than that for me personally, because it was this chance to acknowledge that Dean is not a... I don't know, a god on the mountaintop. So he's not the old wise guru who's handing down advice. He's a real person who's doing real stuff. And one thing about this podcast that I have tried to do for so many reasons is I want this show to be personal. I have wanted this show to take, you know, whatever lessons I have learned or successes I have had and to be able to channel those into what can you do with this, right? Because I'm not going to tell you a story just because I want to talk. I'm going to tell you a story because I think there's something that you can get from it. And when I talk to someone like Dean, I realize Dean's just a guy. Like, not to take away from Dean's success, right? But he's just a guy. I am just a guy with a microphone. That's it. And I think that there's so much to be pulled from that when you realize people are just people. And if you have this mentality of, you know, Dean, I used the word hero before, right? That Dean's my hero. Well, all that really means is is that Dean is an example for me to follow in this specific area of his life, that there are lessons I can pull from, there are models I can copy, and then I can improve my own life because I'm extracting the best value from others and bringing those components into my life to go move forward. There's a lot to be said about what it means to interview successful people, and I've done that literally hundreds of times on the show. And one thing that is true over and over and over again is that people are just people. Some of them are doing better than others. Some of them are more willing to fight through those fears than others. But at the end of the day, they're just people. So if you think you can't be one of them, you can. If you think it's not possible for you, it is. 
And that is powerful. That's inspiring to know that you could be the next dot, dot, dot. Fill in the blank and you could be that person. Although it'd be the next version of you. And then others want to copy you in the future. That's awesome. Now, number five this week is actually not a full episode at all. Number five is episode number 122 with the letter A. So whenever I've done a bonus episode, I give them letters. So 122A or B, C, D. And whenever I'm doing this, I am bringing forth an episode that's not a typical Monday morning big episode. It's usually a bonus episode, some extra content, and announcements of some kind. And this particular one was called Change of Plans. No more blog posts for now. Now, what that meant was that I had been blogging up to that point frequently, um, sometimes as often as three, four, five times a week of writing articles and publishing those on my website. That's where I started. Blogging was the introductory content creation journey I went on. That's where it all began, was blogging back in 2000, I think it was 2007, was the very first article that I wrote and first blog post that I put out there. And that's where it all started. This was 16 years ago now. And so blogging for me was a powerful introduction to learning how to create content, how to share that on- online, how to put things out into the world, which of course then led to books, it led to this podcast, it led to lots of other you know courses and, and products I've created. Blogging for me was a chance to find my voice, how to learn how to communicate what I believe and to share that with others and to do so in a way that was clear and simple and helpful. That was always the goal. Well, at some point along the line, I realized that podcasting was more powerful for me as a medium than blogging. And I announced this change on episode 122A just to make it clear, make it public and commit to this change, you know, full throttle in a public way that says, I'm going to actually close this chapter of my business and my life to say, you know, I may write an article or two in the future that may be part of it, but it's no longer the focus. It's no longer the foundation. Podcasting has replaced blogging for me. It took a lot. For me to do this. This was a big change. And knowing how long ago that was now, this was a this was many years ago. Podcasting was the future back then, and it is the present today. The choice I made back then was a good one because podcasting is my better medium. It's a better chance for me to communicate in a way that fits my greatest strengths, which I think also plays into so much of the career advice that I've given on this podcast. Right. I've had a lot of questions from college students and those in their 20s, um, even those in 30s and 40s, who've asked this question about how to really nail down, like, who am I? What am I good at? What should I focus on? What should my life be about? And the only thing that made sense to share back then and the things I still say today is that at some point, you're going to make a connection of your greatest strengths, your greatest interests, and then the opportunities in the world that exist and the overlap of all those things together. And so for me, once I realized that I have this, this passion for communication in the audio medium, well, duh, I should be a podcaster and I should double down on that. Amplify your success, right? Take the things that are working and do more of those and take the things that are only mediocre or poor and just drop them. Just drop them. Let them go. They're done. This, there's a lot to say here. There's so many life lessons to pull from this simple concept of acknowledging things that are working and doubling down on those. You can change your whole life overnight with that one simple concept. And honestly, that changed the entire trajectory of this show and my business. After that, things got better for so many reasons, one of which was that I could now focus exclusively on the medium that I cared the most about, the one that I saw the most potential in. And so once I was able to say my podcast is my thing, the podcast is the thing, well, then, of course, the podcast got better. The content got better. The interviews got better. The audio quality got better. Everything began to change and improve. That's the impact of focus. That's the power of letting things go that are not the best use of your time to do the very few things where you have the most leverage and most potential. So you should have at some point in your life a a, a symbolic transition like this one where it's like, hey, 
change of plans, forget that thing I've been doing. It's now going to be all about this. And here we go. Now, number six on the list this week is episode number 206. 206 was the most different type of episode I had recorded up to that point. It was the first time on this show that I shared a major failure. The episode is called My Recent Trip to the ER and My New Plan to Let Go. If you know my backstory, if you've read my second book, The Free Time Formula, you have heard many times my story of panic attacks, my trips to the ER, to ride in the, in the ambulance to the hospital, to have doctors run scans on me to find out what is going on here. And what was going on here was stress. What was going on was I was burning the candle at both ends. I was preaching a message of productivity and ambition and goal achievements while simultaneously taking that so far, I was actively undermining all of my progress and success by inadvertently killing myself. Like It was this, what do you call a pretty typical experience for the high achievers who are overly ambitious, who want everything. And for me, in many ways, it was even hypocritical because here I am preaching a message of healthy productivity while simultaneously undermining all of that with legitimate panic attacks that are stress-induced that are all from me, right? They were my fault. I was living a life that was not conducive for grand goal achievement in a sustainable long-term fashion. And so for the first time in the history of this podcast, episode 206, I just spilled the beans and said, oops, <laughs> I screwed up. I screwed up in a pretty big way. And so the, the challenge for me was to say, well, if you have been modeling your life after me, I'm sorry, right? I'm sorry to have given you a model that is doomed for failure, a model that could lead to this. Like I, I had a lot of personal reflection time there. It was this like, wait a minute, is this the right plan for me? Am I, am I on the right path? Because here I was just thinking how awesome podcasting was and all these ambitious plans. And man, here I am just really, you know, making things work. And then it just all fell apart. Now, the good news is this story continues in a very positive way. And I learned a lot of great lessons about healthy sustainability and healthy productivity being the foundation from that moment forward. And it has been ever since. And so, yes, my second book, I break down a lot of those lessons, but then, you know, throughout the podcasting history, these last 300 episodes or so, I've been sharing a lot more of those lessons, lessons that I've learned in really taking life one day at a time, making choices that are better for you 10 years from now, not just 10 minutes from now. And so if you want to live a life that is healthy and productive, one that is sustainable and awesome, and you can be better in 10 years than you are today, well, that's going to mean that you're living a life today that will sustain you for the long haul. So episode 206 was a pretty revealing one, a very vulnerable one for me to share just, yeah, some screw ups. And I don't, I, you know, as a perfectionist, I don't like to admit that I have flaws. I don't like, it's just, I don't want to admit them. I want to believe that I have really just nailed everything down and so it's it's one thing to have a, a, a screw up. It's one thing to make a mistake. It's another to do so in a way that's impossible to not then discuss in a public forum. So that's that's what happened back then. Now, number seven this week is actually a three-parter. So I have three episodes that are all related. Uh, two of them happened back-to-back, -back, and another one happened a few years later. Now, what does that all mean? Well, essentially, I broke down on this show with extraordinary detail, along with my wife, Tessa, our story of infertility that then led to the wild birth story of our first daughter, followed by another, yes, another wild birth story of our second daughter. Tessa has been not only the most frequent guest on this podcast, but also she's been the most willing to share a lot of her life here in a way that I can only just respect to the nth degree. It's been phenomenal to be married to her, 
but then phenomenal to be able to share our marriage and stories uh, with you here on this on the show. And one of the things that just really took both of us by surprise in so many ways was our entire story of infertility and the journey we had just to get pregnant to begin with, followed by these really, really crazy stories of the birth of Maisie, our first daughter, and Rosie, our second daughter. And so episode 255 uh, shares a story of fertility, IVF, and all of the kind of ins and outs of that. Um, yes, it is kind of an adult-themed episode. There's a lot of, not graphic detail, but we do discuss things that are a little more advanced. Episode 256 is then our pregnancy and birth story of Maisie. And episode 426 is then the one for Rosie. So once again, episode uh, show notes, jeffsanders.com slash 495. We'll give you all of those. And if you want to hear every episode that Tessa has been on, jeffsanders.com slash Tessa. We'll give you a full list of all those. And number eight in our top 10 list this week is episode number 368. This may be one of the few times in this podcast, and I mean very few, where I was actively angry on the show, where I was actively just ranting out of this deep frustration. So episode 368 is called Why I Left Evernote and My New Productivity System. So if you know my story of Evernote, you know that prior to episode 368, I was promoting the heck out of Evernote. I mean, from day one all the way through for nearly 400 episodes, just praising this company, telling you why it was awesome, how to use it, how to leverage it, how to get the most from it. And it provided me a ton of value for so many years. And then Evernote screwed up and they broke their system. They destroyed the foundation of what their company was all about. And I was mad. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of still am mad years later. Now, the good news is I have a better replacement. Uh, but the bad news was at the time, it radically shattered my own productivity system. And if you know this show, you know that that's what this podcast is about in, in more ways than one, uh, sharing how to get things done in an effective way and to organize all the digital chaos that we have and to be able to then have a simplicity in that system to get better things done and bigger goals accomplished. Well, you need systems to make that possible. And when your systems fail you, oh man, it's that's an Armageddon moment in the productivity sense. And so for me, when Evernote radically changed what they were doing and how they were doing it, well, I got pretty upset. And so I have an entire episode devoted to, I think it's over 20 reasons why Evernote made me mad <laughs> and all the things that you could do to then switch to a better system. Oh, there's actually a newer episode that I just released recently. I have to check the feed on that one for which one it was. Uh, but I just recently updated my system uh, for what I now have for a replacement. Um, short story is it is Google Drive. And so that is where I am today. But I did spend a lot of time over the last few years uh, 10 years of the show, um, praising these various technology systems. And of course, technology changes. I think the real, the story behind Evernote is one of, you can't put all your eggs in one basket, right? We can't simply say, I'm going to commit to a certain system and then double down on it and triple down on it if you're not the one in charge of it. So if you're relying on a third-party company to provide certain value and then they fail you, well, you own the responsibility to change systems. And I think for me, it was this kind of smack in the face moment of I can't trust other people at the level that I have, that I have to own these systems and understand the foundational value of why I use these systems to then be able to easily switch to a new one, right? I can, I can just easily bounce from one tool to another to another because it's not about the tool. It never was about the tool. It was about me. And how I view my notes, my ideas, my systems, and then how I can easily leverage those in a variety of ways. And so that was a big eye opener. It was this, okay, I have a better system now. So thank you, Evernote, for failing me because I am better today than I would have been had I stayed. Which is another story altogether about why failure is feedback and why things when they screw up can lead to such improvement long term. Lots of lessons there I could go into, but let's just leave it at that, right? Evernote failed me, but there's a lot to be gained. Episode 368 to hear that story. 
Now, number nine this week is another two-part series, this one on the topic of thinking. And this is a really cool one because it's an old concept that became new again. And I love when that happens. It's just, it's awesome to be able to see uh, an older principle or foundational, you know, philosophy that then all of a sudden has a new vision in your life, a new place for it. So episode 420 is called, You Become What You Think About Most of the Time. And then 423 is How Successful People Think, The Mental Shift You Can Implement Today. Both of these episodes really target the same concept, which is thinking on purpose and understand the value of why thinking is so valuable. One thing that's really struck me over the years is that I'm in control of my own life. And I know that's an old philosophy. It's not a new statement. It's not even that radical to say out loud. But when it hits you in a new way, when it becomes real in a way that it wasn't before, it can change your life. And once I really kind of I wrestled with this mentally, right? I really let this concept just roll through my brain for months, just thinking about what this means. How do I think intentionally? How do, how do my thoughts change my actions? How do those actions change my habits and then the results I get from them? How can I be someone in the future I'm not today? Well, the answer comes back to how I think, what I think about, what I allow into my brain, what I then mull over and then produce because of all of that. It's It all comes back to what I think about. And it's powerful. <laughs> it's one of those like, oh my gosh, yes, yes, this is it. This is why personal growth was always so powerful for me because yes, on the one hand, I understand that I am responsible for my own life and my own successes and failures and results. But on the other hand, I have the opportunity to change all of that. So it's not just the obligations and responsibilities of woe is me and oh my gosh, there's a lot on my shoulders. No, it's flipping that around completely and saying because all those things are true, I am in control. I have the keys to the car. This is my game to play. Like, let's go live this out on my terms. So it's a powerful kind of a control freak mechanism, maybe. But I think it really speaks to how the episodes of this podcast end every week. When I say, until next time, you have the power to change your life and the fun begins bright and early. Well, that concept of you have the power to change your life, well, that all comes back to this concept of personal growth and ownership over your own thoughts and being able to influence and change how you think. And then because of that, everything else is different and better. Everything rests on the thoughts that you have in between your two ears. That's where it all takes place. That's the miracle. That's where the magic happens. The intentionality on how to live. The potential for what can happen because you decide, you intentionally choose to think differently, live differently, act differently every single day. Well, then holy cow, the future is totally open and it's totally amazing. And finally, number 10 on our top 10 list of the top 10 episodes in 10 years, a lot of 10s, is episode number 489, Weekly Review 4.0, The New Smarter Way to Manage What's Due Now. If you know this podcast, you know that I am obsessed with my review process, and I have gone through, yes, four iterations. In fact, recently I discussed update number 4.1, so I've got even more than that. So my weekly reviews have been so powerful. Dating back to before the podcast even began, I've been doing these reviews and monitoring the progress of them, evolving them, changing them, updating them, making them better. And it's still true today. It has not changed at all. It probably will never change because the value is always there. If you want to change your life in the productive sense, I want you to really embrace this. I am dying for you to get the value that I have had here. So yes, in episode number 489, I do break down the most recent update to the review process. And if you want to get a copy of a weekly review template, you can do that in the 5 a.m. club at jeffsanders.com slash 5 a.m. club. Now, the cool part about the weekly review process is how it incorporates all of the other productivity systems I've discussed for so many years. There are a lot of things you can do to be more productive. So many, like strategies upon strategies upon strategies. And the review process is the one that's the culmination of all of them put together. 
is the chance to review them, to look at all of them and assess them and make them better and do things even better going forward. It's so powerful. And so for me, this is productivity at its best. It is the uh, the embodiment of what it means to be intentional about your life. And of course, you could choose to wake up at 5 a.m. You could choose to run marathons, write books, you know, build businesses, go to grad school, change the world. You can do all these things you want to do. The ambitious pursuits are endless. But I think there's so much value in the intentionality behind saying, if those things are true, if ambitious pursuits are on my agenda, if I am a high achiever and identify with that title as far as my identity, then there's going to be specific things you're going to do to make that true. It's not just going to happen by magic. You know, the miracle of the 5 a.m. is that it's not a miracle at all. It's extremely logistical. Right, It's just based on the very simple facts of, I went to bed on time, I set an alarm, and I got up. Ta-da! <laughs> That's it. So why do I have a podcast for 10 years to talk about that? Because it's not about any of that. Right? It never has been. The logistics are great and they're helpful, but of course, this entire show has never been about logistics. It's never been about productivity, which sounds weird. But at the end of the day, this show is 100% committed to you living your best life and doing so on purpose. The intentionality of living your best life because you chose to live it in the way that you want. That's it. Now, how you do that is totally up to you, right? I have my kind of Jeff Sanders glasses on, so I, I see my own life and the world in my own way. And what my intention for this podcast has always been is to provide opportunities for you. So if there are things you can discover and then change, yes, awesome. And then likewise, the engagement factor, if you want to be able to provide accountability to me, to hold me to what I've said, to give me better ideas, I even love that even more, which is the joy of the conversation that the podcast can be, even though this is literally a monologue every week. <laughs> So having said that, to improve that engagement even further, I would love to hear from you. Of course, I say this all the time, but I'm going to say it again. You can email me, jeff at jeffsanders.com. I would love to hear from you. I will respond back to you within 24 hours or less because I value communication so much that that's what I want to be able to promise and deliver on like I have for so many years, and I'll do that going forward. So yes, jeff at jeffsanders.com. Talk to me. Tell me what's going on. Tell me how this show could be better for you going forward. Now, at the top of the show, I did promise that I would reveal to you a few of my plans for this podcast in the next decade. And the one thing I can say about that with confidence is I plan to be here every single Monday morning for the next 10 years. Beyond that, I have a ton of ideas of ways to enhance this show, to make it better, to provide more value, and you're going to hear about all of that in the coming months as those things are released. And so the cool part about this is that I am doubling down on this show. I am making this show more important than ever, so the next decade is going to be better than the last one. That's my promise to you. I'm going to commit to this show more so than I ever have because I believe in these concepts. I believe in the power of podcasting. I believe in the power of what this medium provides and what this show and the principles it stands on can provide for you each and every week. So Monday mornings, bright and early, you'll see me here. And of course, if you want to get out of bed at 5 a.m. and have your own miracle, I would love that. But that's not required. The only thing that I would ask of you is if you love this show, Subscribe to the show, tell a friend if you want to, but ultimately just enjoy your own 5 a.m. miracle. And for the action step this week, yes, go rediscover your own 5 a.m. miracle. You know, if 10 years has taught me anything, it's that life is messy and unpredictable and full of surprises. And the foundational principle of the 5 a.m. miracle is intentionality, choosing your life on purpose. And if life has thrown you a few curveballs, you're not alone. And you have the same opportunity tomorrow, just as you've had every day of your life, to bounce out of bed with enthusiasm and dominate your day before breakfast. JeffSanders.com slash 495 is the place to go for the episode notes. And of course, subscribe to or follow this podcast in Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And that's all I've got for you here on the 5 a.m. Miracle Podcast this week. Until next time, 
you have the power to change your life. And the fun begins bright and early.